Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Mapix. Hope you guys are doing well today. It's a beautiful day here. This is actually Friday, at least, making this video. I think I'll upload this today anyway, but it's pretty hot outside. It's gonna be like 90 degrees. Man, oh man, some reason we're even here yet. So we actually got this laptop here, and there's a problem actually with this one. Obviously, that's why we're making a video of it. And I think the problem is a little bit more interesting than the laptop itself because the customer's kid actually stepped on it, and now when you turn it on, it just kind of goes to. You get the logo here, and it will go right to a BIOS. It won't do anything else, right? And you can see even in the storage right here, it doesn't detect that there's actually like a, a hard drive or anything there. It says empty, 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 empty. So I'm not sure if there's damage to the hard drive itself, if there is just it's disconnected or something, because it's pretty interesting. That's usually the, the case, right? Um, for these BIOSes, it's really, uh, this one's actually pretty nice. It just has a nice little graphic UI here. And it does tell you if it detects a hard drive or not. So plugging in like a portable device or something would be actually totally worthless because the BIOS itself doesn't detect it. And obviously the OS isn't booting. So if we just wanted to uh, avoid opening it, we can't really do that because there obviously is a problem with it, right? And what I'm probably thinking is maybe there's a disconnection. Maybe there's a connection that's loose in there. Uh, that would be a best case scenario. Maybe we just have to replug it in. I'm really hoping that's it. Or there could be a problem with the drive itself. The drive is damaged. So now the customer is just more interested in getting it, it on and working. That's the most important thing because they really like their laptop. I think the best thing would be really to, if, especially if it doesn't, I think this one has an M.2, but if it doesn't, I think the best thing would be to get them to an SSD anyway. It might be a better way to do an upgrade, but we obviously need to go ahead and, and take a look at it. So let's go ahead and see uh, what we can do for them and really go from there because of that. Oh man, the magnets are pulling my screwdriver too. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Look, it just. <laughs> it just. <it's laughs> man. All right, I'll leave that screw alone for now. <laughs> There's a magnet under there, and it's really strong. It's gonna be the same on this side too, yep. Be surprised if the hardware just like falls out, right? <laughs> Ooh, man, it's all very dusty, very dirty. Let's go this way. Let's close it. Now we can go this way. There we go. I don't think you guys want to see those dirt and dust either. It's kind of nasty in there, but that's usually how it works. So um, I'm going to lift up this. Let's take out the battery connection. There we go. Now here's the hard drive here. And where does this connect to? Does this connect anywhere? It connects right here. Okay. Uh, connection looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and take it out and let's see what's going on with it. Why is it not being detected? Because uh, I was expecting like a loose like M.2 drive. That's what I was actually expecting. I thought this one had an SSD. I know it's older, but I thought it did. Hmm. So there's a bracket that goes around here. Hopefully it's not under the board because they sometimes are. Be careful of the cable. They even put a little screw here. Now we need to be careful. We don't want to rip any of these connections. So let's take this up. Uh, what other connections there? That's the ribbon. There's another one, I'm not sure where that goes. Maybe I don't care about it. Oh, it's two for the, that's just strange. What is this for? This, this is the same cable. Look at that. That's the same cable that, whoop. the same cable that goes to the hard drive. Is this part of like a an LCD connection too? Look at that, so the hard drive cable is split here. That's where this is interesting. I wonder if that's a problem with it or it's just the drive has a problem. We see the cable. The cable has a SATA connection here and then it's split. And this goes towards what? This could also be like, because look, this also goes towards the LCD. So this is actually pretty interesting. I'm not sure why this is like that, but um, that's a strange cable connection. Let's focus on the main problem here. Let's see if, uh, first let's see actually if the hard drive is healthy. So let's go ahead and take out this hard drive. So we took out the hard drive. We see this is a HGST hard drive. Uh, nothing crazy here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to plug it in. I have my little USB-C 
adapter here because we just want to check the status of it first to see if it does anything differently, makes any noises. See the lights on. This is plugged in, right? Okay. Going crazy. Okay, so that does sound like there was actually a problem with the drive if you could hear that. I'll try to make that a little bit louder. It sounds like the head's actually stuck on here. So that's why it's not spinning. It's not doing anything because it can't. So not every time when you hear uh, like a beeping, clicking, that a uh, head actually needs to be replaced. It's not necessarily always the case there. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, actually, because um, I can't do anything much with the static connection. I'm going to go plug this into my PC3000 and see what it's going to do. Okay, so we are going to load up our diagnostic right now. This is on a PC3000 portable. We're going to do like an automatic checkup. It's going to show us just some errors on the drive if that's the case, if we're able to access any data. So we see that there are a lot of errors here. We see the ABR error, and we're not able to access the user data. So clearly this is going to be a data recovery, and we need to see first, though, if the customer is really interested in doing a data recovery for that before we really go down these steps. But I at least know as of right now, they're at least trying to fix the laptop. So let's focus on that first, and then we'll get back to this, make another video if they're interested in doing data recovery. Okay, so his hard drive does have a have a problem. Um, we did take a look at it. It does look like there is obviously more of a problem here. It does seem to actually be more of a head issue, like a more of a physical issue there because we did inspect it a little bit further. So we see um, this kind of makes a lot of sense because there is a physical problem with the drive itself. And for this one, we need to inform the customer that um, this will be more of a data recovery and see they want to go down that route. We will go from there. I actually did look this up too. This is actually a webcam. Um, connection that goes with the hard drive connection. That's why um, this cable is here. So obviously I'm going to plug this in. Let's go ahead and see if this makes a difference because we can at least do a fix for the machine here, right? And uh, well, it goes this way. Let's just go ahead quickly, just plug it in, make sure it actually works fine. It turns on. We can see there's actually a hard disk here now uh, showing the 250 gig that's in there, which is great. I don't know if there's operating system on there, but it does show that there's actually a hard drive in there. We can just install an operating system and I think that should be all good to go. Okay, so let's actually install an operating system. This one's an older one, so we'll give this one, I guess, um, let's go ahead and plug it in and install an OS and then see if it works. All right, so you can see this is actually booting fine with this uh, SSD drive in here. It's probably a better way to suggest it anyway, but it's booting to Windows uh, 11 here. If you're interested in actually how we make a bootable for this one, go ahead and check that out on our channel. Anyways, I hope you guys are watching this video on doing a repair for a non-boot device found or if you just boot it up and it goes right to your BIOS you see the screen there sometimes I could tell you that right away you can look to see if there's any SATA devices connected usually if it's especially like a physical problem like someone stepped on it it was dropped it can be pushed out of the connection uh, if it's like an M.2 we've actually seen it even though there's a screw there that holds it in it, that can actually get pushed out there or the connection could get a little bit messed up or most likely and the worst case scenario would be something like this and it would be more of a data recovery option that we're going to let the client know and see if they want to go ahead to go through with that. And I um, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. And we'll see you guys next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.